Hello everyone and welcome to another Microsoft 365 video. On today's episode, I want to talk about something that will soon affect all of us using Microsoft Teams. Back in January, Microsoft announced that they are changing the behavior of the website tab. When you add a website as a tab in your channels, this is to better align with security and web standards. From now on, starting this July, websites will start to open in a new tab instead of opening inside of Microsoft Teams as they used to. So this is a downgrade in my perspective uh, in something that was really a really nice functionality that we had inside of our Teams. But there are workarounds and in this video I will show you how you can take advantage of SharePoint and other out-of-the-box applications to continue to have kind of the same behavior that you and your users are used to. So before we jump into the solution and the workaround, let me show you probably for the last time how the website app works. So when you add a new app to your channels, there's this option over here that allows you to add an actual website and that's exactly what I will do. I will add my own blog and when I save it and when a user access to it, he will be able to actually interact and see the website inside of Microsoft Teams. This is great because the user don't need to switch context and don't need to leave Microsoft Teams to access to the content. There are websites that might not work inside of Teams using this approach, but well, turning this off and shutting down this functionality for all the websites, I think it's a bit too much. There was a thing that always annoyed me in this application that it's this message here at the top. So, well, this will be gone, but with it will be also the possibility to see sites inside of Microsoft Teams. So the workaround to continue to see websites inside of Teams is to use SharePoint news links and add the news link using the SharePoint apps. So the first thing that you have to do is to go to the SharePoint site collection that is used by the team where you are adding the tab. You can use other site collections, but keep in mind that then you will have to play with the permissions. Otherwise, you may end up with users not being able to see the website as a tab in the site collection. But well, let's go and open the site collection. I always do it this way. It lands in the files, but well, we can move to the home page and see everything in the SharePoint site. So to use the news link, the first thing you have to do is to click in the new and then news link. This is a functionality that will use SharePoint as a shortcut to a public website. This works great in SharePoint sites. The news post, the news link post will appear inside of your SharePoint news web part. You will be able to see it in other locations where news are shown inside of Microsoft 365. And it's a great way to share information that it's publicly available in the web. So I will create a new news link. So in here, you will have to type the URL for the public site that you want to display inside of Microsoft Teams. And for this demo, I will use my blog once again. So quickly paste it. It will get all the information from the website, but you have the opportunity to fine tune this. Since we will be using this as a tab in Microsoft Teams, the information that is shown and displayed in here is not that relevant. The only thing I have to do is click in post. And from the moment I do this, as you saw, I already had the web part, the news web part added to the page. This appears in the SharePoint page. And this is the major downside of this approach, but there's a workaround to get this removed from here and still being able to use the news link in Microsoft Teams. So let's go back to Microsoft Teams and instead of using the website, this time I will use the SharePoint application. We'll get the pages. And as you can see, created less than one minute ago is my SharePoint page pointing to the news link. So I will select this one, hit the save button. And it redirects me to the public website that I also have in here. As you saw, 
while it was loading, the SharePoint Chrome loaded as well. This is the default behavior of the news link. It starts loading the page, then it detects that it's a redirect page and redirects you to the correct location. So it will be a bit slower than the old website app, but at least you will be able to continue to see web pages inside of Microsoft uh, Teams as a tab. So whenever this website stops working and starts redirecting you to the browser, now you know that you have the SharePoint alternative that you can create in the site collection that it's connected to your team. So I told you that the news is now visible inside of the SharePoint site and we need to get rid of it because it doesn't really make any sense having this available as a news post inside of SharePoint and it might confuse your users. So the workaround to do this is to remove the promoted state of the page from SharePoint. So we will basically tell SharePoint that this page is not a news post. It will be just a redirect page that SharePoint will be uh, using to display the content inside of Microsoft Teams. And to do that, we will have to use PNP PowerShell. And the first thing that we need to do is to connect to the SharePoint site collection where the page was created. And this is exactly what I'm doing right now. And then in the blog post that I wrote to support this video, you have the common lights and all the instructions that you can follow step by step, but we will have to set the PNP list item in the site pages library to remove the news from the news web part. And this is the common light that I will be copying pasting in here, but I will not execute it right away because I need to get the ID of the page that I just created. And to do that, I need to go to my site pages library in the SharePoint site collection. The ID that I need to execute the command let is not available by default, but if you click in the add column and show or hide more columns, you can actually select the ID, hit the apply button. And now I can see the ID of the page that I've created. Uh, this one is the number nine. So let's go back to the PowerShell, type the number nine, hit enter. And once this is executed, you will see the resume of what happened. So page with ID number nine with this title and this um, width changed from promoted state equals two. That means that it was a news post to promoted state equals zero. So there is one more step that you need to do, and this is really mandatory. Otherwise, the page in Microsoft Teams will not do the redirection. It will display the settings of the repost page. You need to go to the SharePoint document library. And as you can see, this page was just modified and you can see that it's not published by this uh, yellow icon so you need to click in the three dots uh, hit the more and hit the republish and once you do that you can go back to the home page you will see that my news uh, web part no longer shows the news post the news link still the page exists and if i go back to microsoft teams as you can see it will load the sharepoint page so this is the workaround whenever the website tab changes behavior on your tenant. If you really need to get the websites still available in the Teams channels as tabs to avoid disrupting the workflow of your users, you have the SharePoint approach. There's a few steps involved in the process in order to get the page created and to remove it from the SharePoint news web part. But in the end, at least it's a first party solution and you are not using something custom and you are still using things that Microsoft provide out of the box. So you sh it should be safe for you to use. If for some reason the site that you're trying to embed or add as a tab in Microsoft Teams does not render using this approach, then you will have to fall back to the website. And in that case, the user will have to go to the web browser in order to access the information. So let me know what you think about this change, if you agree with it or not. And let me know in the comments how you would improve this experience. See you next time. Bye bye.